A little over two years ago, I released a video titled End of the Abyss, in which I took the demo for Outriders, cut and spliced it up, created a ton of one-off sound effects, and made my own trailer for the game. I spent untold amounts of hours on this thing, went through a ton of edits, and all of this for a game that had not even launched. This space fantasy RPG was intensely polarizing. To some, it was innovative and edgy. To others, it was to be avoided. Outriders tapped into the most insane power fantasies available and allowed players to stack power on power. It was dark, slightly funky, and I loved it. Welcome back to the channel, it's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and for today there's no breaking info coming in this one. There's no leaks, there's no build guides, just me with my honest feelings about this fantasy looter shooter from a relatively unknown studio, People Can Fly. Now it's been at least seven months since I last logged a minute of game time. Would it be just as quirky as I remember? Would the combat be just as frenetic? Would it be able to do all the things I remember it doing? Well, the answer to all those questions, plus my personal feelings, lay just ahead. So sit back and enjoy Outriders in 2023. Outriders dropped at a time in my gaming career that I had very little going on. It was kind of the right game at the perfect time. And I've talked about this before, but I found Outriders by sheer luck. It was February 2021. I had missed all the trailers and media buzz. And it was a fellow content creator that said they had a spare code to this funky new space fantasy RPG. And if I wanted to give it a shot, the code was mine. I also tried out the full demo and I was not initially impressed. I know there were a lot of players that put in tons of time with it, but honestly, I played it through a few times, thought it played okay, and then I logged off. Hindsight being 2020 and looking back on that time, it was actually me and my playstyle that wasn't yet compatible with Outriders. I played too conservatively and instantly took cover, which anyone that has played this game will tell you that is the very thing you don't do. April 2021 rolled around, Outriders went into full launch, and somewhere in there, I activated that code to the full game, and here's where the insanity began. You see, Outriders was a self-proclaimed anti-looter shooter. It promised meaningful build crafting that you could see minute one, and when you looked at the talents available between your gear and weapons, you'd say to yourself, there's no way people can fly will let me stack all of these overpowered abilities together, but they did. Each and every time you got a new gear piece or weapon with an even more insanely powered talent, you'd swear you were about to break the game, but somehow it held. It was buggy, there were huge server connection issues, crossplay was hit or miss, but the game was damn fun. People that didn't play the game used to ask me what it was like, and I remember my answer was almost always the same. Imagine Destiny, strictly in third person, even more powerful, with multiple supers that are constantly coming back off of cooldown. And to some, that made perfect sense, and they joined in the fun. Those first weeks of launch were insane. I remember looking at the player counts, and just on Steam, they were well over 125,000 concurrent players. It was available day one on Game Pass. You could get it on PlayStation. When it was working properly, it all just kind of hit. Within the first few weeks of launch, we had already hit Endgame, known as Expeditions, Outriders' mini dungeon grinds, and so began our steady climb through the challenge tier system. Our gear incrementally got better. So did our understanding of build crafting, and there was a sense of pride and accomplishment when you were finally able to solo a challenge tier 15 expedition. The story was decent as well, with the side missions and quests really standing out, culminating in the New Horizon update and eventually World Slayer, Outriders 1 and only DLC. Now, of course, there's a ton I've skipped over. The changes, the class nerfs, adjustments, technical gremlins, because, you know, all of that's kind of in the past. But let's instead concentrate on what Outriders plays like today, in 2023, and it took me about 10 minutes of game time to get that old, familiar feel back. 
The combat is still just as wild and frenetic as I remember, with huge swarms of enemies constantly being flung directly at you. For me on PC and playing solo, the game still performs quite well. Even though this is an older version of the Unreal Engine, the game also shows well. It's not overly flashy, but it does the job. I've always loved the fact that Outriders class system allowed you to play the game in four very distinct play styles, and with my time back with the game, they still all feel unique and powerful in their very own way. Technomancer is still so OP, Trickster is my guilty pleasure, Pyro is steady as ever, and Devastator, well, what more do you need than enough melee strength to flatten a small moon? Now, unfortunately, my recording software went a little haywire during my play session, but I was able to put in a full completion of the Trials of Taria Gratar, World Slayer's endgame, and I still wonder what that could have been if properly formatted. Expeditions, especially the new style versions, are still good fun. I stopped by and visited my old monster pal, Wendigo, and I also tried out some of the assassination contracts. Playing Outriders after that much time away really had me watching more of the scenery than I originally remember. That funky alien art style that mixed natural settings with the elemental anomaly effects. And let's just say that when you see Outriders, you know you are playing Outriders. I was able to try out a bunch of the weapons I still had in my player stash. Assault rifles and shotguns are still meta. And to this day, I don't know why the other weapons weren't given a thorough balance pass. As they're so weak by comparison. I also tried playing a bit of the early game again when you're a fresh altered and you first meet Seth. And that part of the game is still really cool and was really well done. Thinking back to when Outriders first launched, and I began creating and uploading content for the game with no real expectations, and I've got to say that the embrace I received from the online community was unexpected and overwhelming. My Outriders content remains to this day as some of my most watched videos in the history of my channel, and overall those were great times. I was not only playing the game and enjoying the hell out of it, but I also got to create content for it and it was well received. I started streaming the game and was met with enthusiasm. My Discord community exploded overnight. I befriended tons of new players. I was invited to join the official Outriders Ambassador program. I got partnered on Twitch under the old guidelines, streaming Outriders. I mean, it was a truly golden time to be a part of this community. And I mentioned that warm embrace as I close with this. I recently lost my father, rather suddenly, and I'm still dealing with those emotions. I sometimes find myself sitting down at my gaming station and just staring off at a blank monitor, kind of lost as to what I need to do, or past need to do, what I want to do. These past few hours with Outriders just flew by. I was able to enjoy myself again, much like those 700 plus hours I had originally logged in the game. It reminded me of those incredible times with this awesome community and our shared love for this quirky RPG that has slowly faded out of memory. As always, I welcome your feedback about anything Outriders. Sound off in the comments section below. Remember to smash that sub button and ring the bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are always appreciated. All my socials can be found in the video description. A huge shout out to the over 126,000 of you that have taken the leap and hit subscribe. And a special thanks goes out to my patrons. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.